Oh. Hang on. Uh, actually, uh... I'm gonna keep this one. Wait, what? It belongs here. <laughs> Why won't you let me have it? No. No. What? Because I don't want to think about you and her listening to our record. <laughs> Spare yourself the inevitable heartbreak. Nothing lasts forever. You never can recapture that feeling, you know. First love. Why is this fucking song always playing? God. First of all, uh, uh, Lisa and Julian, thank you for your time. Thank you for the interview. Uh, fun project, really interesting project. I want to congratulate the two of you on, on, on something really interesting, something really unique. I, I wasn't really know what to expect when I started watching the, the series. And I absolutely loved how it ended. I don't want to, obviously, I don't want to enter into the spoilers, but I absolutely love how it ended. And I, 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 I again, I think I want one more now that I finished it working. So I hopefully, hopefully we can see more down the line. So I maybe, I, I think I should start with the creator, Julian. Julian, how did, how did you come up with this, with this idea? So I have something else I want to ask Lisa. So how, how did you come up with this, uh, this idea of, a lot of people all relate to it. So how did you come up? How, you know, how, what was the genesis of it all? Uh, you know, like a lot of things started with a very, very painful breakup uh, and me and my ex uh, divvying up our, our vinyl collection. And, and out of that, you know, I channeled that pain and trauma into my art. Uh, and it just kind of came to me that each of the albums in this collection we had t tells a story of a moment in our relationship. And I just thought that was a, a wonderful way to make music the centerpiece for each episode and for the story rather than the other way around uh and how uh we can tell a different kind of love story and i've always been obsessed with the idea of music as this um thing that connects us unites us it's a way that we find common ground and so um i thought that would be a great way to tell the story as, as a couple starting with a breakup rather than a couple coming together but it's you know a, a breakup they fall apart and it's the music and the people and the stories in between that conspire to bring them back together. Uh, and then something I've played with a, with a long time that is, is, I think is, as you said before, incredibly relatable is this idea as, uh, of music as a cue for memory. Mm -hmm. And music is, has this ability to, you know, when we ha hear a song, it can transport us back to that moment when we first heard it or the time it underscored a milestone moment in our lives. And it's music's that, music is the thing that sort of, it, elevates these moments into indelible and unforgettable memories. So this is a way of, of us um, telling a story about music as nostalgia uh, and, and also as a, as, a, as a way that, you know, it is the soundtrack for our lives, literally. Um, so that, that was kind of the way we went about it. And, and what are those random connections that music is able to make? And I think some of those stories are randomly connected. Some people aren't directly connected and we wanted to make that a part of it as well, that music finds that, that interesting way to, to bring us together. Um, I wanna jump with Lisa now. Lisa, when you're, you're brought into the project, what was your first reaction you know, when you saw what the, what the story was about, what the project was about and how it was, you know, how the story was developing? Well, I mean, Julian is an incredible writer and I'm, you know, familiar with his work for the last couple of years. And when he, he originally made a short film, which was the first episode. And so I got to see that first and I loved it. Right. And so then when he sent me the idea for the series and how the episodes linked together, I just thought it was so smart and so clever. And it really bridged between an anthology, you know, and a serialized series, series because you get a bit of both, right? You get to really go into these worlds, really enjoy people and get to know their story and a slice of their life and then move on to the next relationship. And then of course, as you said, you love the ending, which we're not gonna give away, but uh, that, you know, to find how they're all interconnected, everybody who watches all six in kind of one sitting, which is sort of about an hour and 20 minutes of content, get that full experience and have this real uh, connection and really get how it's all fully connected. So that's what I was really attracted about is that, that dichotomy between the two. And as I said, the, the writing and, you know, really all that amazing cast, the ability to, you know, we have incredible talent in Canada and, you know, also looking, you know, to some of our cast who is both, you know, has expanded both, you know, internationally as well as nationally for us, you know, all that opportunity for those incredible roles and to pair incredible music with incredible talent is what really attracted me to the project. 
I want to go back to Lisa. I know Julian obviously is the, also the, the you know the actor is the lead actor of the, of the of the series. He's the creator and the lead actor. Oh, the almost the boss, but you also you also have to give him some instructions when when we're going through the process. Um, how much maybe how much how much of a part he was through the through the whole process of filming when 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 you were directing the 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 different episodes. Yeah, so I just directed the first episode. We co-directed it together. And then we had other directors that directed other episodes mm -hmm. through the series. Um, you know, Julian and I work very closely together. And, you know, I think what's great about us is that, you know, that we work so closely together, but we each have our own lanes and we each mm -hmm. take our leads in our own lanes, right? Which I think is always really important with a partnership, right? Is to really understand like, what is it that you want out of this project and how to really um, sort of excel in that lane, but then be able to rely on each other. You know, cause I've worked with a bunch of different creators over the years and some are very involved in production and some are a lot more hands off, right? But what's really great with Julian being sort of the writer um, and actor is that he's really, every day that he's on set that he's not acting he's thinking it as a writer and it means you always mm -hmm. have a writer on set which is incredible so if an actor has a question something's not quite working we want to try an alt your writer is right there and that is you know invaluable so that was what's really unique about um about uh, this show and some of the other shows that i've been pretty able to produce is having that creator on set with you is 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 amazing so and it was fun to tell him what to do when he was acting you know sometimes you get like don't do it that way, do it this way, you know, and then you can't because you're the director. So sometimes you're gonna have fun too. Yes. <laughs> That's why I wanted to, I wanted to be I wanted, I wanted a question to be fun. That's why I asked it. <laughs> Julian, you know, as the writer, the, the, all these different stories, uh, you just meant you just said it, the playlist playlist of life. How did you, you know, how did you pick up those, you know, which how did you know which songs to pick for each story? What what you know, how was that process about? Uh, well, with with Pet Sounds by the Beach Boys, that was that's from the original short film, and and we knew we could get the rights to that track and that album, so that was sort of going to be the anchor for the the show. Um, the rest, it, it was a mix of things. One is just the crazy alchemy that is artistic creation. In my mind, I had an image of lyric bent getting ready to be a preacher while he's dancing to "I Feel It Coming," um, and I don't know why. But that's what an image came to my head. And I'm like, I, I don't know what this is, but I got to find a way to write this. And then same with Joy chugging. I just had an image of, a, of an elderly woman chugging a, a, a bottle of champagne on her birthday, telling her family to screw off and it being to, the, to Nina Simone playing underneath. So there, those were sort of those kind of moments. Um, and then, you know, episode three, where it's the dinner party, I knew it had to be a song that, that could be quite incendiary and provocative, one that someone like me would be like, oh, this is just a great fun song. And to someone else, it could be quite triggering. And it was very, very important that I worked with Sud Sutherland, the director who's a filmmaker of color to find the right balance of, of how to properly represent that story, but also to make these characters complex and flawed and not have it sort of be a one-sided argument. So that, that was sort of all part of that process. And then finally for, you know, the Johnny Orlando episode, originally we, you know, if we could say, we, 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 it was it was for Sean Mendez. We had written an episode for Sean Mendez and then he exploded. And so the label came back to us and said, you know, Johnny is really this up and coming, you know, wonderful pop star with a, a huge social following. He'd be great for this. So I pivoted and I rewrote the episode and it became about showcasing Johnny, a song from Johnny's new album. And then the final one was, you know, we wanted to do something in the EDM world so we could experience this, this woman could experience the drop. And uh, again, that's, you know, Universal Music saying, hey, we have access to Zed's Dead. They do a concert down in Florida. Perhaps you guys could find a relationship and shoot at their concert and also use one of their tracks for the impetus for the drop. And it all just kind of worked together that way. Again, we don't, I don't want to spoil, I don't want to talk about that last episode, but yeah, I'm a huge fan of, I, I like music overall. I think that was one of the ones, one of the things that stood out to me about this, the series is I, I'm a fan of music. That's how it is. I mean, and I work so, I mean, if I'm, I don't have music just in the background, I, I won't be able to work. It's just, I need something that, you know, I can connect to, I mean, if it's a black bear, if healthy, or it's a, uh, which is typically what I listen to, or Bad Bunny, just, you know, just, you know, yeah, yeah, Puerto yeah. Rico, Bad Bunny, I have to, we have to listen to Bad Bunny. We, we, we don't, if not, they, they, they kill us in here. But, um, <laughs> 
I, I, no, I, I'm being sad. I'm being that serious. We have to mention him. So, yeah. whatever. Okay. Um, but I, I, you mentioned, I, and again, without any spoilers, you mentioned the pastor, and that episode to me was so interesting because of the song and the whole situation that he was going through, and it was so fitting one with the other one. I, I, I think the question where I'm going with this, which one, which of the different stories that you wrote, which was one to me, you felt what to you the most complicated of them all, the, the one, that you, one, one that you found the most trouble trying to, you know, put it together? Well, I'll let Lisa answer one. I'll give you mine. Mine, it's, it, it was that episode. It was the Lyric Bent episode, just because um, it was the one that I rewrote the most. It was about this, it's this tricky balance of the comedy and the, the drama of it. And we, you know, even in the edit where we're still finding what the tone of this is because it can be quite slapstick and crazy and weird, but also there's a humanity to it because he's really struggling with something. And I wanted to tell a story about how music has this power to be a spiritual salve and a spiritual connection to something larger than us, but also it's this, it can be a really great, love making thing it make babies music so it's like how what's the best way to what's the best conduit to tell that uh give give voice to that conflict and that's through a you know a man of god and and his struggle between those two but it was really about finding the right balance the third one yes is tricky because of the you know the the issues we bring up cultural appropriation and it's me and and, and a black family and i'm arguing with them so that's always a tricky minefield to navigate but i think the yeah the lyrics episode with the reverend is what was the most challenging Mm -hmm. And I would say, you know, to piggyback on that, like, so episode three uh, thematically was really challenging, right? And we, and we did look at that script. We worked closely when we got Suds on, in, on board. We worked closely with Suds on the script and with other consultants because that was definitely um, a hot button, you know, topic um, and, you know, culture appropriation. Uh, so we really wanted to be telling not everybody's version, but Julian's version of the story, right? Which was what, what was really was very specific, right? And a specific take on it. So that was definitely a, in sort of pre-production that, you know, even when we were shooting it really delicate, but I would say on logistics, I mean, episode six was nuts. And again, we're not giving things away, yeah. but I will say, and I quote, get me a baby. Okay, I need a baby. So let me just leave it at that. So as a produ as a producer, sometimes, you know, you uh, that was a logistic, like I mean, shooting, we shot in Florida, um, at, live at a concert, you know, so you're dealing with a new crew and, you know, incredible talent. Um, some that came with us, some that we had met there and then uh, just shooting in the Florida Everglades. So enough said on that and, and so that one logistically as a producer as a producer hat you're like okay i've got my pin i'm officially in the producers union uh, uh now on to the next bigger better thing but so that one logistically was really challenging yeah I, again that that, that 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 last episode is, is like uh, the way to go out and i, mm -hmm. I want to i want to see more so again i want to congratulate the two of you congratulate the two of you for an awesome uh, new series I, I want to see more. Hopefully, we will see more down in the future because I really want somebody to pick this up and just go with it. And, and, and Julian and Lisa, again, thank you for your time. Thank you for the interview. Thank you for your time. Really appreciate it. Thank you. I think we're done. Thank you. Okay, great.